Okay, here's kind of a slideshow of uh, vertical spindle roller mill coal pulverizers. There's all kinds of pulverizers in industry. Um, these are just the one style we have information on and decided to do a slideshow on. But there's a lot of different ways to pulverize the coal. <clears throat> Theory of operation and principles of burning pulverized coal is pretty much the same. This is an older style Foster Wheeler MB pulverizer. Um, this is the actual roller sit in here. Down here is the gearbox, the turntable. Um, this part down here is the air comes in. There's scraper bars inside here that carry any debris that doesn't get pulverized, drops it down to the pyrite hopper. This would be rock and tramp iron, <clears throat> hard pieces of coal stuff that it gets kicked out the side of the roll, roller mills and drops down the air ducts. Um, this is the newer style, the MBF. On this one, the rollers are fixed. This one, the rollers are on a satellite arrangement, three rollers in here. The turntable moves and the rollers kind of follow it. They're free to move. There's a thrust ring on top of springs that put the downward pressure on it. There's only two of these left. They're used for the upper burners. Here's a view of the four pulverizers. Um, these would feed the four decks of burners. There's eight pulverizers total. It's one side of the unit. See the pyrite hopper down here. Um, any debris accumulates in your air box, scraper bars carry and drop down the pyrite hopper. A couple times a shift, use a water reductor pump to pull out the gravel, coal, anything in here gets loosed out. Sent to a holding tank, then that is sent out with the bottom ash um, every so often. So you can see the four pulverizers. You can see the difference. This one here is the spring tension down here and it holds down the ring along with also the springs up there. These, the rollers, um, can move up and down, but they're fixed. You have seal air coming in. Big thing is keeping seal air to keep coal dust out of the bearings. Another picture of that same side. I can see your the pyrite pit, and little indicator lights telling you the position of the sluice valves, water inlet valves. There's a flop gate on these that has to be open when the mill's running. Um, when you sluice, it closes, and then it pulls out the any gravel. They get quite a bit of gravel and stuff built up. It depends on what's coming in the plant. Um, it can be almost a con continuous job if you have really bad coal, got a bunch of gravel dug up or something in with it. <clears throat> and this is the other side, four mills on the other side of the powerhouse. Can see the pyrite hopper here. Back here it looks like it had to blow out the pulverizer. Occasionally a little pyrite pulverizer um, shoot to the pyrite hopper plugs up. Be located back in here. That can be from a too high of a level in the pyrite hopper. Just a lot of debris coming through. So you have to open up the door and open up the flop gate and try and blow them out. If it backs up, it'll start getting a lot of coal up in the air ducts. The bomb the table. And then I'll start burning. This one here shows the pyrite hopper. Newer style mills, you can see the pin here. Uh, this tell you how much coal it's grinding, how far the roller is off the deck. You have move in and out as it's running. This the top of the pulverizer. These are the BSO, burner shutoff valves. These are the cold ducts. So before cold ducts come out of each pulverizer, heading to one deck of burners. Uh, the coal comes down the center from the feeder. The feeder sits above here. Then there's a um, coal valve up here, feeder outlet valve. Down here is the temperature probe. Uh, these were the coal orifice valves. Uh, this one here, they're a little bit out of focus, the BSOs, but it does show the seal air filter. This is air coming in off the cold air um, bypassing the 
air preheaters off the primary air fan. Have to have really clean air because this is sealing turntable seals, your bearing seals, classifier seals. On our pulverizer video, we show a lot of this stuff is shown so you can actually see what it really looks like in real life. This way, adjust the classifiers. Usually, the MBF, they were left around 55%. The MBs, they were opened up a little bit more for startup, and then we closed them down as it started running, temperatures come up. These will control the cold fineness, it determines how much reject rate there is. These ran pretty good, so they usually just left. But it's something you could adjust if you had problems with the burner firing. This is the air box. This would be the cold air line coming into the mix box. Uh, we have a K drive controller on the damper. Cold side, and you have the hot side coming in. Uh, the temperature up here is controlled with that temperature probe on top of the pulverizer. You want to maintain about 140 degrees or so going to the burners. The air coming in here can be very hot. Depends how wet the coal is, uh, the temperatures of it. If you get nice and snow with it, it could be almost all hot air. Now from here, the air drops down and goes into the bottom of the pulverizer. These are coal conduits going up to burners. About a 20 inch line. This shows the gearbox down below. Um, up here, these are spray nozzles for when you grind these out, uh, minimizes the dust. If the mill trips offline, you have a lot of coal left up above. So an operator have to go down and start the mill up, uh, inert it, start it, and then the coal will get worked out down the air vents, down to the scraper box, and down the pyrite hopper. So you have to sluice the coal out. You can't leave coal in these things, it will start smoldering. Um, Petra's let off focus, but it's kind of show the controls for the pulverizer. These are all DPs, pressure control. Back here's a motor. This kind of shows the pyrite hopper. This would be the flop gate. Uh, here's a valve you'll close if you open up the pyrite hopper. Your scrapers sit up here. Any rock, debris that doesn't get pulverized, drops down the air box. The scrapers bring it over here and drop it down the chute, down to your pyrite hopper. Here's inside the pyrite hopper, shows your flop gate. Um, see a few rocks and some debris in here. These will plug up really fast if you get, let's like, say, dirty coal or a lot of debris builds up on here. I'll actually start backing it up the chute up into the air part of the pulverizer and start smoldering. So you're gonna have to open up the door and blow this thing out occasionally or uh, keep the screens clean. When you do that, you have to shut that other valve because there's pretty hot air inside those things. This is inside. This is where the reject coal returns down to the grinding table. Uh, the coal comes in the center here, new coal dropping in. On top there's classifiers, little veins that determine the fineness of the coal leaving. These are the three rollers inside. See a little bit of wear on him. These are well filled bearings. Uh, it's a newer style. So there are pins down through here on the back side. Uh, this thing, there's a spring outside that puts some tension down on them. But they're free to move up and down. These stay stationary and the turntable rolls. Another picture of the coal reject coming in. Up here are the classifiers. I see some of the linkages. They set back up in here. They'll spin the cold air mix and help determine the fineness. Here's one, the part of the pulverizer's roller assembly. Another view of the reject chute. Got a ladder climb going up the side, up to the classifiers are. You can't see the pipe in the center. That's where the coal drops back in. The new coal comes in. So there's quite a lot of coal circulating inside these when they're running. 
You have the new coal coming in, dropping down. Then you also have the reject coal dropping down. You can kind of see that, that pin, that plunger will sit behind this part of this roller. There's bearings and um, pins that sit back down here. These have bearings, well-filled bearings in here. And these are the wheels. See a little bit, see a little bit of wear on this one. This just shows the sealer going into the pins. Uh, that roller we, we saw, there's a bearing in here and then the pins come through. Uh, the spring, the pins sit back here. So you use sealer just to try to keep dust out of all the bearing surfaces. This kind of shows the roller table. This is where the air is coming in. Um, you can see the pin here for the roller. Here's one of your grinding wheels. That's why you don't want to throw water down these if you have a fire, the hot metal will um, crack. So any debris doesn't get ground, gets shoved back down these airports and um, ends up down below on the air table. This is the older style. You can see the rollers in here. They're on a satellite assembly. Up here's the thrust ring. Um, the turntable moves. And these are kind of free to move with the friction of the table, the pressure, they'll roll along uh, with the table and grind. These are really prone to skidding, which means the rollers quit moving and start sliding. Uh, it can be detrimental to the thrust rings up here, do a lot of damage in these. These have spring tension that hold down the ring. There's springs up here also that put downward tension on these rollers. They can move up and down, but they hit rocks, the springs will allow them to move up and down. Down here's the air box. Here's the air coming in. Drops down this duct coming in here. Uh, this is sweeping steam. Steam to blow any coal that gets thrown back up in here out when you shut down. It's also inerting steam that floods the table here. Um, when you shut down, if you have hot coal inside. Another picture of the roller showing some roller wear. Say the bearings are in here. See when the oil plugs here, it's preparing for maintenance. Um, that's where you add the oil to inside these. This just shows the center. Grind table is where the coal drops down. Uh, these are the cast grinding sections. Shows the three rollers inside. Basically, the coal hits this, um, drops down here, is ground, air comes in the sides, sweeps the fine coal up to the tops, classified. Anything too large is rejected, drops back down. And the picture down below, turntable sits up right above here. I uh, do the sprays like for grinding out. This is the air box. This is where the air is coming in. Uh, this is the sweeping steam. These little nozzles will blow out any coal that builds up. Sometimes it gets thrown back up in here. These are the air ducts going up to the grinding table. Uh, we saw the other side, you see a little bit of coal here and stuff that gets kicked back down, drops down. So these will drop ungrindable stuff down here and even some coal. This is where the scraper comes in. Um, the scrapers will come along here and try and move all the debris down here to the pyrite inlet chute. They're spring operated. Uh, this is part of the air control. Here's the Paso primary air shutoff damper. Up here we have um, sweeping steam valve feeds in. Uh, it's going down to a trap here. Inerting steam comes off a little higher. So this is one of the dampers on the boiler for shutdown. Primary air shutoff. From here, the air is coming down and going into the pulverizer. This is the flow control damper. This regulates the airflow through the pulverizer. 
based on fuel and coal being pulverized. There's a minimum ratio, seems like 60,000 pounds of coal. Coal take 160,000 pounds of air. Depends on the coal and what you're grinding, but definitely a ratio that is controlled. If you get it too low, the pulverizer will start plugging up. The coal won't leave the pulverizer. It gets rejected and keeps piling up down there. And pretty soon it plugs up. You'll see high motor current and high DP when that happens. This is the other damper, the first damper coming in, the guillotine. Uh, it's actually a plate in here driven by a limit torque motor. This is the big steel plate that drives in to shut the air off. So there's three sets of dampers on this style. Guillotine, flow control, and then the primary air shutoff. Uh, it says warning, do not force. You know, more than the indicator rod shows. This is a case where more force isn't better. This is kind of shows the layout. Up here is your guillotine, flow control, and your primary air shutoff sits right below that. Up here are some airflow indication pitot tubes. This shows more of the airflow. Uh, just a couple of pitot tubes are being used. It seems to work fine instead of a, all of them. This shows the motor down below. Um, down here you have your oil pumps for the gearbox oil. It runs through filters and coolers. Uh, sweeping steam valve here going in. Temperature probe for the air coming into the pulverizer. This is the air coming in. Basically your passo sits up here. Flow control and guillotine. So this is the air coming in. Look at this temperature. And the outlet temperature determines what this temperature needs to be. There's another picture of the instrument control rack. Uh, all these little air tubes are measuring DPs across the pulverizer, air pressures. Uh, DPs are really critical on these if you have something plugging up. So once a week you have to use the instrument air and blow these two lines out just to make sure they don't fill up with dust. Now uh, you got some magnetic gauges so you can um, see what the pressures are. This all shows up in the control room on the pulverizer page. If you watch a pulverizer video, all this stuff is shown on the graphics. It's kind of nice seeing it in real life. See what you're really working with. <clears throat> okay, this is our pulverizer video. It shows a pulverizer with a bad scraper. Um, big thing, it shows a pulverizer running the speed they run at. It's pretty impressive the size of wheels and they're really how fast they're moving. So it's showing a few sparks out, some stuff out, but uh, it's not really a problem on it. That's a bad scraper in the pulverizer. Uh, stuff through here with the bolts getting close. What's on the fire though? Huh? What's on the fire? Pulverizer is cold. Yeah. We've had fire come out. This thing hit the wall over here where it's blowing out the high-rise box. 